Hi, welcome to DAC 56 here at Alec booth and today we are going to take a look at uh, some of the advanced UVM tools in Rivera Pro and how it can benefit you in uh, doing a debug and uh, creating new UVM environments. So let's uh, dive into the slideshow. So today we're going to take a look at uh, some of the UVM usability features in Rivera Pro and uh, see how it helps you in visualizing and debugging uh, UVM environments. And some of those features include the UVM graph, UVM hierarchy window, UVM configuration window, classes window, transaction streams and data, transactions and waveforms, and the UVM register generator. So the first thing uh, I want to talk about is the UVM graph. The UVM graph is a very neat tool that helps you represent a UVM environment in a graphical form. It displays the UVM components and also the TLM connections between the components. And the TLM connections also show the direction of data flow. You can cross probe from the UVM graph to the source code or the SV code. And it's compatible with both UVM 1.2 and 1.1D. Uh, this is how the UVM graph would look and uh, we will dig more uh, in more detail when we get into the tool demo but uh, just so we know this is how it would look and the next feature that I want to talk about is the UVM hierarchy window which is uh, representing the UVM environment in a structural hierarchy and also shows the components and their properties. You can filter so you can easily find a specific component uh, within the uh, UVM uh, graph uh, and also you can cross probe to UVM graph and each uh, type of component then displays the corresponding properties for that uh, particular component. And this is how the UVM hierarchy window looks and as you can see you have your uh, traditional uh, hierarchical view where you have the test uh, which instantiates uh, environment and under that you see the instantiations of uh, different agents and under the agents you see the drivers monitor sequence and so on and whenever you click on any of those components you can see the properties underneath here so the next uh, window that i would like to talk about is the uvm configuration window and uh, it shows the resources available in the UVM configuration database during simulation. It can be seen in both flat or hierarchical view and you can, uh, the configuration pane shows all the UVM uh, resources stored in the configuration uh, database and the properties play, uh, pane displays properties uh, of a selected resource in the configuration pane. And this is how the configuration uh, window looks like. And you can see whenever you select any of the configuration, it will show you the underlying properties for that uh, particular uh, configuration uh, resource that has been selected. So the next thing we have is uh, not specifically for UVM, but it uh, kind of helps with the uh, debug of UVM environments. It's uh, any system verlog class we have a dedicated window to view the system verlog classes inside the simulation tool and so this way you can see information about the class members and also see what are the base types for that class what is the derived type of the class if there are any nested types the methods inside the class properties and if there are any inherited members uh, in the class we can see all that information in one window and it can cross probe to the source code so you can easily navigate from one class to the other or you can navigate from the classes window to the source code as well and this is how uh, the classes window looks like as you can see uh, whenever you explain expand a class you can see the base the derived the methods and the properties within that class so it makes it easy for you to navigate from one uh, to the other the next thing uh, or the next feature that I want to talk about is the transaction streams and what transaction streams does it if you are recording transactions into the simulation database it lists all of them in a single window 
and from those you can uh, display either the streams that are part of the current simulation run or you can display the ones that are saved in an, from an existing simulation run. It lists uh, only the transaction streams that have been initialized, uh, initialized in the running simulation. So you have to uh, record those. And from that transaction streams window, you can add it to the transaction uh, data window or uh, the waveform window to look at them in different formats. So one of the first ways is to add uh, the, those signals to the transactions data window where it displays detailed information about each transaction from selected transaction stream and it displays in a tabular form where each row represents a single transaction and uh, the transaction grid displays each transaction and uh, the properties are or the attributes are shown in different columns and it's synchronized with the waveform so you can uh, go from the transaction to the waveform just by a few clicks so this is how the transaction streams look it just lists all the transactions uh, that are recorded into the database and this is a transactions data window where you can add a selected transaction stream and it will show you the time so each row represents a different transaction and uh, from there you can look at uh, the individual properties for those uh, um, attributes for that particular transaction. And also, as I mentioned, you can add transactions to the waveform. So instead of viewing it in that tabular format, you can view it on the waveform and the same thing, you can expand and uh, see the attributes inside the transaction and you can see this allows you to see the transaction as a whole in, instead of uh, individual bit changes so this is how a transaction would look on the waveform uh, it makes more sense when i show you the full waveform and uh, the last but not the least we uh, i want to talk about the uvm register generator again this is a nice usability feature where you can uh, use the command line tool to generate uvm register models it can support uh, IP exact or uh, Aldex proprietary format. Saves users from a lot of uh, error prone uh, manual work because as you know, creating these uh, register models manually is uh, very tedious and uh, you have to do a lot of same thing over and over again. So that's where the generator comes in handy and uh, the generated model can be referenced in tests, sequences, components to verify that your DUT register is behaving correctly. And uh, this is how the CSV file would look. And uh, this is uh, one of the command line that you can run. And this would be the generated uh, register model for that particular register. So yeah, so the first thing I want to show you guys is the UVM graph. And as you can see, it can completely uh, collapse and you can see it in different formats so you can see it in like a vertical or like a horizontal configuration and then you can uh, completely collapse it and uh, you can start off with the uvm test and which instantiates your uh, environment which in turn instantiates another environment but uh, in there you have your master slave uh, master agents and the slave agents and you can also within the agent you can expand and take a look at the individual components of that agent uh, mainly the sequencer driver and the monitor and then you can also see the tlm connections between the different uh, ports between those components and this way this is very useful when you are either new to uvm or you're creating a new uvm environment it makes it very easy to navigate uh, in this format so you don't have to uh, worry about uh, having to take a look at the code and then going back from one file to the other you can uh, take a look at this and from a single point of view you can see if all the connections are right see if all the components are properly instantiated and this helps you with uh, creating a new UVM environment and debugging a UVM environment so and from here you can uh, always export it 
to uh, different formats so we can export it to different uh, graphical formats so you can use that for uh, documentation or uh, team meetings and uh, use that for that purpose as well and the next thing uh, i want to show you guys is the uvm hierarchy window and the uvm hierarchy window uh, consists of uh, as i mentioned the uvm environment in a hierarchical format so you can see again the same thing the test instantiates uh, the env and under the env you can see the agents and under the agent you see the driver monitor sequencer and so on and when you select on each component you can see the underlying property and see the values of those uh, properties as well so it gives you a single point where you can easily navigate and see the properties of different components and different uh, uh, instances inside your uh, uvm environment without having to go into individual files and finding out what it's doing and uh, this you can use to cross probe to the source code and uh, it goes to opens the source code and also you can cross probe to the uvm graph so it will show you the uvm graph where it's a component set or you can also cross probe to the classes window so it will take you to the classes window which i will talk in a few minutes but you can cross probe it in different ways and uh, that's the uvm hierarchy window and next i want to talk about the uvm configuration window which uh, shows all the resources that are part of the uvm configuration database and uh, shows you all the uh, properties when you select any of them and uh, again it gives you a single location where you can take a look at how the configuration database is uh, set and you can uh, from a single location find all these values instead of having to go into the individual file and figuring out the value uh, that you uh, specified or you modified and uh, this can be viewed in both uh, uh, flat or hierarchical way so you can uh, use that to make those changes as well and uh, and uh, moving ahead let's uh, go to this window actually the classes window the classes window allows you to take a look at all the classes that are part of your uh, test environment and uh, it can show when you expand on any of the class it will show you what is uh, what are the base classes for that particular class and what are the methods within that class and even the methods you can see if there are any inherited methods from the parent class even same with the properties you can see the inherited properties for the parent class and it can also show in depending on uh, what class you are looking at it can show you uh, if uh, there are any constraints or if there are any inherited uh, classes for that particular uh, class that you uh, are uh, taking a look at and this uh, like the derived classes so this particular uh, base test class uh, is derived from or is extended from the uvm test class but this in itself has uh, other class that use this as the parent class so you can easily see the base class the derived classes and from here you can navigate to either the declaration or the definition of that class or you can go to the symbol within the classes uh, window so it gives you a quick way to navigate from uh, one uh, class to the other instead of manually having to find the source file and opening it and uh, finding where the class is within that file uh, this gives you a nice way to uh, navigate through the classes so the next thing i want to talk about is the transaction streams and as you can see these are the transactions that have been recorded uh, into the database and from here you can either add it to the transactions data window where it will show you the transactions in a tabular format and show you each line or each row represents a single transaction and the columns so show you the properties and show you uh, the data uh, that is uh, on that particular transaction 
and that's one way of uh, analyzing your transactions. So the transaction streams, you can add it also to the waveform window and this way you can view the transactions as a whole instead of individual bit transitions. And uh, the benefit of that is that you are not cluttering your waveform, you just viewing it as when the transaction started, when the transaction finishes. So when you're working at a higher level of abstraction, this makes much uh, more sense uh, instead of uh, looking at individual bit transitions in the waveform. So those uh, were some of the UVM uh, related or features that help you with the UVM design. So, and the last thing I want to show is the UVM register uh, generator. And this is a command line uh, tool which you can use to uh, easily uh, change, uh, generate UVM models for your uh, register models for your design or for, for your UVM environment. And what it does is it takes a CSV file or you can use IP exact and then converts it uh, into the UVM uh, register model and it also generates the adapter file as well and uh, it is a command line tool so you need to run the command line uh, or the command register generator you give the format which we are using the input format as csv in this instance and you give the output name for the register model and you can uh, tell it to register the verilog rtl and you want if you want you can generate the html docs for that as well and specify what is your input uh, CSV file. So this is how the input uh, CSV file will look. It will give you the, the block name. I mean, it makes more sense if you take a look at it in uh, Excel, but uh, it's pretty much the same. You have your uh, block name, which is your DUT registers, the item block item name, which is the name of the register, the size of the register, the memory map, any the number of bytes and if you have uh, different fields in the register you can specify them as well and this way you can take this and then the tool will take this information from the csv file and generate the dut or the register uh, model for that uh, particular uh, csv file and as you can see this is the uvm auto generated uvm register model for that particular csv file and it, uh, as you can see, it's a lot of repetitive code and it's very easy to use a generator rather than manually coding it because it uh, manually coding results in a lot of uh, errors being uh, placed into this, but using a generator helps you with uh, avoiding that. And as I mentioned, it also generates the adapter file for that and also the uh, APV, uh, like if you have any uh, register file, uh, you can generate that as well. So that's all uh, we have here for the demo. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And if you guys have any other information, you know where to reach us at www.aldec.com. Thank you.